Hello and welcome to this presentation from Micro Epsilon. Today I'll be introducing you to one of our newest sensor solutions, that of 3D surface capture and inspection with Surface Control 3D. This offers an extremely effective way of capturing high resolution surface information in a fraction of a second. My name is Glenn Wedgebrow and I am the Business Development Manager for Micro Epsilon here in the UK. In today's presentation, I will give you a short introduction to the company. I will then get into the main topic, introducing you to Surface Control 3D, where I will be covering the measuring principle, the key software and integration options, and the typical applications where the technology can be used. So who or what is Micro Epsilon? For the benefit of those watching for the first time, they are a German company established in 1968 originally selling American high precision strain gauges, which is actually where the name Micro Epsilon comes from. Around 1980, we developed our first eddy current sensing technology and then moved away from selling strain gauges and started to develop our products for displacement measurement. From just two people, the company has grown to over 1200 employees. The entire product range is developed and manufactured within the Micro Epsilon group of companies, of which Micro Epsilon UK is one. The organisation has been built by engineers and combined we have more than 5,000 years of collective technical knowledge across multiple industrial sectors. One of the keys to our success is that we treat our customers as partners, working with them to ensure stable, long-term relationships worldwide. Our current product offering falls into three basic categories, measurement of displacement, measurement of temperature, and inspection and measurement of color. Across these three fields, we've developed and utilized technologies that allow us to measure positional changes from as small as 30 picometers and distances up to three kilometers. With our infrared temperature sensors, we can measure from minus 50 degrees C to plus 3000 degrees C. And for color, we can detect changes or shades much finer than a normal human being. We're able to offer products as catalogue one-offs to fully customise solutions in hundreds or thousands of units. Indeed, our production capability is more than a million products a year. Our displacement products can themselves be split into three categories depending on what our customers require. One-dimensional or 1D products are our main catalogue products and comprise a number of different measurement technologies for measuring distance. The 2D, 3D portfolio enables us to acquire both distance to a target as well as capturing or measuring profile features across the surface. And our third offering is that of turnkey systems where we supply the complete solution for measuring material thickness and profile in a customer's production line. Today's webinar is about our Surface Control 3D product, which, as you would expect, is part of our 2D, 3D product portfolio. So, what is Surface Control? Basically, it's a snapshot sensor for capturing geometry, shape, and making surface inspections. But why do we need it? In many products, we as consumers are quite particular about how something looks and feels. In many cases, the final quality check has been done by well-trained operators, but as humans, there is always some degree of subjectivity about what is a pass or a fail. Then we have the functional aspects. How flat is the part? Is it the correct shape? What is its size? Having the capability to automatically capture, detect, and report this information is where industrial image processing plays a major role. But when surfaces are not shiny or have poor reflection, the ability to inspect correctly has pushed some technology to its limits. So for quality assurance, especially on diffusely reflecting parts, the development of fringe projection, which is the technology behind surface control, has shown significant benefits. 
So let us briefly consider how we at Micro Epsilon previously captured 3D data. Using our scan control sensors, we're able to capture two dimensional information in X and Z planes, with X being across the line and Z being height information towards the sensor. The Y direction being the axis of traverse, which if applied to a moving target or with the sensor moving over a target, allowed 3D information to be captured and processed. Of course, 3D analysis has to wait for the 2D capture process to finish and the spatial resolution in the y direction of travel is reliant on having a fixed speed of traverse or a trigger input from an encoder to determine the correct y spacing. Now with surface control 3D, all the information in x, y and z planes is captured together and typically within less than half a second. The key obvious difference is that the part must be static for the time of exposure so this is why we call it a 3D snapshot sensor as it captures a moment in time. So let us take a closer look at how we create the 3D information. The makeup of the sensor is a blue LED projection unit in the centre of the housing with two high resolution cameras situated either side. This arrangement gives us a stereoscopic view of the target and because we look from both sides are able to reduce shadowing caused by the single sided triangulation principle. The acquisition process is in two stages. First we perform grey code projection which is a binary pattern of alternating light and dark stripes. The calculation of approximated 3D values is based on the projection of ever smaller stripes and the accuracy of the approximated values is limited by the size of the smallest stripe. Then we have the sine pattern projection, a continuous sinusoidal pattern to generate highly accurate 3D data based on the previously calculated approximated values. Acquisition takes less than half a second in total. However, the total processing time for the 3D point cloud will depend on the lateral resolution that has been set. With the default settings, this is typically between half a second and one second. Two sensor ranges will be offered at first the Dash 80 and the Dash 120 model. The numbers are referring to the width of the area at the mid part of the measurement range. Because of the fact we have two cameras viewing the same area, the field of view we can measure is shaped on how the cameras overlap. So the keener eyed of you may notice that the width of the x-axis is getting smaller at the end of the measuring range. On Dash 80 model, the X field width reduces from the 80 mm back down to 75 mm, whereas the longer range, Dash 120, reduces down to 122 mm at the end of range. The reason for this is because of the alignment of the two cameras and projector as shown here. The surface you are looking to capture can have a number of different characteristics, but the main thing of importance is whether a surface is diffuse or specularly reflective. When you have a matte surface, light that hits the surface will reflect in all directions. This means that you can view the light from a range of different angles. When the surface is shiny or specularly reflective, like a mirror, then the light will reflect the same angle off the surface, which means you must be at the exact same angle as the reflection in order to see the returned light. Surface control works best on matte or diffusely reflecting surfaces, that is to say those that do not present a perfect mirror. For especially shiny and flat surfaces, we would use the reflect control sensor. If you are familiar with our 2D scan control portfolio, then the types of surface control sensor 
are very similar in that we have a version suited for system integrators, the Surface Control 3500, and a version suited for end users called the Surface Control 3510. The model version you will need very much depends on your own capabilities and requirements so that those customers who want to do their own analysis can do so, but those who want a more user orientated experience will benefit from the 3D Inspect software functions. I will talk more about the software shortly, but in principle all the software tools are available for download, but the usable features will be locked depending on the model that is connected to the software. Configuration and setup of the sensors is all done through the software we provide. Micro Epsilon 3D View is our visualization and data export software for use with all of our 3D sensors. It gives the ability to view online or offline sensor data, sensor data in 3D with the XYZ points represented by a customizable color scaling palette and is provided free of charge. It allows for 3D export in ASCII, STL, CSV and Polygon file formats for the representation and further processing of the data in other programs. MicroEpsilon 3D View is therefore suitable for everyone to use with the sensors. To give an idea of the capability of 3D View, here is a miniature wooden pallet. Inserted in the centre section is a staple and some holes from a previous staple. There is also an amount of texture and splintering which can also be seen. I've snapped this with the surface control and here we can see the impressive information collated by the sensor. The point cloud is generated and displayed in three windows which give you the ability to preview the data in 2D, cut specific regions and then display the main 3D image. We can then zoom in and reveal the detail. Lighting can also be adjusted to highlight greater detail if needed and all this data can be exported as a CAD file as previously described. Here we can see the exported file just pulled into Paint 3D. Hopefully you can agree that the data quality is really very good. Also included in the software is an effective alignment tool. As we have a projector inside the sensor, it is easy to create targeting and positioning support. Using the target and camera views, you can simply position and align the sensor to the target for optimum performance. Soon to be released is the 3D Inspect software package, which gives the ability to make 3D measurements from the point cloud and set OK and not OK conditions. It can be used for all Micro Epsilon 3D sensors, but the functionality is limited depending on whether you use the 3500 series or the 3510 sensors. It allows for adjustment and alignment of the sensor together with data pre-processing, extraction and combination of measurement objects. From those objects, you can then make calculations of further measured values and also configure the measured value transfer and the outputs from the software. So, if we take this object, which is a utility tool, we are able to locate and orientate this part using the pre-processing functions. Which functions you use will depend on the target and application. But here I am using contour tracking to find and rotate the part to a position I can further inspect. Once we have the part in a location we want, we can then look to find features and take measurements. Like for example, measuring the center hole. When an object is configured, a number of potential measurements are made available for you to select. In this example, radius is highlighted. We can also find edges so that we can then combine the results of different edge finds 
to measure lengths and widths of various features. And because we are working in 3D, we are able to build up information from only partial surfaces. So here we use the cylinder fit to match the curvature of the surface we can see to then calculate the cylinder dimensions and then with this we can combine the results to determine the difference in the larger and smaller diameters of the bar. Any measurement parameter available can be selected and a tolerance applied for OK or not OK classifications. Of course, many people are using 3D systems and software tools capable of working with 3D data. We already have available the Software Developer Kit with full example code for integration. Surface Control is also designed around the new 3D Gigi Vision and Genicam standards. For packages supporting these standards, the sensor settings and configuration are accessible and recognised and even our own software provides the same settings in tabular form like you would get when integrating to the third party software. There are three connections on the rear of the sensor. The power supply is nominally 24 volts DC. Ethernet is for communications and gigabit Ethernet is recommended and the multifunction IO is for trigger input and system acknowledgements. When using the 3510 models with 3D Inspect, the measurement data and result is able to be communicated using Modbus, UDP and TCP formats. To link to an alternative field goods network like Profinet, Ethercat or Ethernet IP, we can supply our gateway module which converts the information to the appropriate protocols. While the surface control sensor can generate 3D data directly, processing the 3D information obtained for 3D inspect must be run on an external PC or controller. Customers can provide their own, or Micro Epsilon will also be offering a PC solution where needed at additional cost. Depending on individual requirements, there could be two ways to integrate the system with a PLC. And of course, using the 2D 3D gateway module allows connection to the various field bus networks. As this is a new sensor, we are learning all the time about its possibilities and capabilities. The next few slides will give a hint of what is possible, but we think it is only the start of what we can achieve. One of the hardest things to get your head around is the fact we are working with 3D data. This means we have depth of information and many more points on which to set and align parameters. The software tools therefore allow us to extrapolate and interpolate details that were previously not solvable with 2D capture. So things like flatness, radius and measurement of distances between derived points are all now possible, even if they are not necessarily on the same plane. Depending on the pre-processing applied, it is possible to filter the data with low or high pass filters to extract the relevant detail. The fact we capture everything at the same time in a defined coordinate system reduces the setup and installation requirements. We are no longer having to determine point spacing of lines to build an image or make the measurements. Inspection tasks for component placement, alignments and height all become possible. If applications cannot be solved directly with 3D Inspect, then you still have the opportunity to utilize the SDK and pull the data via Gigi Vision to a third party software and their vision tools. These can then be applied to the raw data captured. So here, for example, we're checking the bead path and dimensions, which now becomes possible without the need to traverse a sensor over the bead. Flatness and surface defect tasks become much more straightforward as we've captured the full information together. Even with tilted or angled surfaces, it is still possible to align a plane to the area of interest 
and determine the quality. Whilst we don't have the range to inspect complete surfaces in one go, we do have a very good spatial resolution and accuracy. Very often the inspection requirement will be one that repeats at multiple locations. The size of surface control means it can be mounted onto a robot for guidance and inspection in various locations. Curved surfaces are always tricky to determine the defects on, but with polynomial subtraction of the underlying data, we can flatten curves but keep the surface detail. Depending on the task, we can also look at more specialist software for assessment of the surfaces. Here we can see a curved moulded part. The moulded elements on the rear create imperceptible sink marks on the A or facing surface, which would show up if the surface was coated or treated. This is to be avoided so that the producer doesn't ship this type of product to the end user. This application is looking for defects on the edge of a clutch disc. Here we are utilising third party software that compares the CAD model to the 3D capture and allows determination of OK and not OK conditions. And whilst we cannot perform optical character recognition directly, many vision tools are able to do this provided they have the right data. We are able to extract the height or depth information to present, a to present the data in a way that vision tools can then read and also determine the quality of the embossment or the imprinted text. So, surface control represents the next evolution for Micro Epsilon in terms of 3D surface capture. It continues the trend for ever higher accuracy and measurement capability and fulfills the need for high precision capture of smaller targets. The system is capturing up to 2.2 million 3D points per second and is a fully integrated industrial sensor with passive cooling. The sensor is designed for inline, inline data capture and can be used for geometry, shape and surface inspection. 3D data is coming directly from the sensor and is supporting the new 3D Gigi Vision and Jenny Cam standards so that you have easy integration into third party software and we offer our own powerful evaluation software together with a comprehensive SDK. Of course, surface control is not going to solve everything, but we do have options to consider before we have to decline a project. I touched on reflect control earlier. For those with flat mirror-like surfaces that surface control cannot get a reading from, then we also offer the reflect control sensor. This will work with the same software packages and tools already seen, and watch out for more information on this product in the near future. Also available soon, we will have the redesigned surface control 2500 sensors. These offer a much larger measuring field and access to additional software packages provided by our group company, IMB Vision. And of course, we still have our traditional scan control 2D capture portfolio, which gives more flexibility in terms of continuous extrusion process monitoring, wider scan lines and affordability. So if you have a surface measurement task, and make sure you ask us for advice and support in selecting the right sensor for your application. To keep up to date with product information from Micro Epsilon, make sure you're following us on LinkedIn where we post additional information regularly. Just search for Micro Epsilon UK. You can also subscribe to our UK newsletter for product news and information about upcoming future events. If you have any questions relating to the content of this presentation or have an application to discuss, you can email us at info at micro-epsilon.co.uk for the UK and Ireland, 
or info at micro-epsilon.de for any other country. My name is Glenn Wedgebrow and thank you for watching. Goodbye.